I want to say a big welcome to everybody who's joining us today from around the world. Um, my name is Luz and I am uh, responsible for the PR at Moi and I'm here today with the designer Joost van Dijswijk and our moderator Jan Willem Poels who is our country manager at USA and he's located in New York. So um, Joost uh, and Jan Willem will dive deeper into Moi's newest design which is called the tinkering but before they do yeah. let me just give you a few practical uh, things of information. So this talk will be about 30 minutes. Uh, we'll have a 25 minute talk and then we have some time for all your questions. So if you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. You can leave them in the Q&A down below. Um, feel free to ask us anything, of course. Um, we will also provide a link for you to download the press uh, mailing and the digital press pack. If you uh, would like to, uh, to have those, that will be for you available in the chat. Um, and that leads me to um, to go to the animation that we created to celebrate the, this beautiful new design by uh, by Joost. And after that, the talk will start between Jan Willem and Joost. Thank you guys again for joining and uh, enjoy this video. Thank you. Hey Joost. Hey How are Jan you? Willem. I'm good. Are you? Thank you. Good to see you. Greetings from New York. Um, yeah. I'm here in the, the our New York showroom. Um, and I was see you found your... a nice background. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, had the construction lamp, eh? like an earlier design. Uh, hey Joost, that you uh, did you have with our with our collection? Um, and and it was funny uh, the the. A beautiful uh, stop animation started with your shoes, and yeah. um, we always like this year we missed our Milan moment, right? Yeah, uh, like yeah, yeah. there was always this one moment in the year. I, mean, I don't come to Eindhoven a lot, but uh, you don't come to New York a lot. But um, in Milan, we always have this moment, and we always compare our sneakers. Huh? Like we traditionally yeah. buy a new pair of uh, sneakers, I guess, before Milan, and and we always compare. So um, yeah. But so it's, it's great to moment. see those sneakers. Yeah, it's great to see those. Uh, those yeah, uh, those they sneakers. headline the video. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, and you already told me that you were wearing them again today. So, hey. Yeah, uh, I did. Can you tell me actually, uh, Joost, where are you? Where are you? So I now I can that... show you a little bit around. We are in my studio in Eindhoven, which I share with my wife and, and, and well, colleague and yeah, sparring partner. So this is our studio. We just built and renovated uh, last year, so we are now in the in the showroom of our works. Uh, over there, you see the the more the office space, and down there you see a little bit of the the workshop. So we have a metal workshop, wood workshop, place for ceramics, and just some general place where we can put everything together and storage, of course. And later on, um, uh, after this crisis, we want to build also our own gallery space in the in the garden where we still have some uh, some space so after a search of about 10 years for the perfect studio we finally were able to to buy this plot of land with an existing building and we completely renovated it in a in a sustainable way so uh, this new build part is completely uh, constructed out of wood from germany like durable wood and the solar panels on the roof give enough electricity to power 
all the electricity and all the machines. Uh, so we completely self-supporting and uh, yeah, it's really nice to re finally have our own place to, to work from, to give also a little bit of stability in what you do and, uh, and also to, you know, as a, as a designer you, and, and artist, you always put in those places with cheap rents at first and then the rent goes up. You know how it goes and then and then you have to move again and so we did move for about eight times and we completely got fed up with that because it takes a lot of effort and a lot of creativity to to move every time so we're really mm -hmm. happy to to have a final and nice place over here wow that looks like an amazing studio i can't wait to to at some point like come over and and see the studio maybe when that showroom opens when that gallery space opens yeah yeah so um and and like for you, like what was like what was the reason you wanted to become a designer? How 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 come you went into this direction? So um, I come from Delft. So Delft is known for two things: that is Delft Blue Pottery and the university that's there. Uh, so that was always a little bit of my destiny to go to this university and do some kind of study like architecture or maybe industrial design. But when I attended like an open day there and those teachers began to talk about this study, I was completely disappointed because it was only theory and it was a very strict program. So I uh, was at that time already more interested in art and some more, a little bit of freedom in music. Uh, so I went to look for uh, uh, art academies, whether that was something for me. And then I came on the Design Academy, which was the perfect, you know, uh, mix between the two, between the Art Academy and this industrial design. So uh, that was in Eindhoven. So uh, it was never the intention, but I got a little bit stuck over here, which is, a, mm -hmm. you know, it's not, a, it's not a nicest city in the world, but I always say it's, you know, Eindhoven is so ugly. So everyone is striving really hard to make something out of, uh, <laughs> of the life, which makes it again, very vibrant and very interesting. So. Yeah. And, and the studio is like, where in Eindhoven, like, is it in the center of Eindhoven, outside uh, Eindhoven, mm -hmm. if you get a big space like this? Yeah. It's, it's like five minutes walk from the city center. It's like the first oh, wow. uh, area where it's possible to do what we have to do, like welding, having a spray boot, things like that. So it's the first area where that's possible and uh, really close to the center. So for us, it's really the perfect location. Yeah. Okay. And, and if you design like, like hey, now after having had gone to the design academy, and after, like, what is your philosophy? What are your ideas? And how do you design? How does the process work for you so uh, after the design academy uh, me and kiki uh, we were already together uh, at that time we we said so we don't want to be designers that you can find under the d and the yellow pages now we want to be designers that you find under the j of yoast and the k of kiki so we wanted to be more uh, recognizable and have our own voice and our own identity so to accomplish that, we thought we have to build our own studio and workshop uh, to enable us to just create from ourselves. Uh, so that's a very big heritage, of course, of Gerard Rietveld, the, the, who did that uh, about a hundred years mm -hmm. ago, who made such a special things that no one wanted to produce them, but he thought it was really necessary. So he just started his own furniture company. And I think that's the sort of base uh, of uh, Dutch design that you just start creating without an audience in your mind, without, uh, um, you know, the commercial uh, ideas in your mind, but always from your own identity and the things you want to do. So uh, that's, that's why I think we create more sort of special items. And sometimes it leads to more sort of art pieces and limited edition pieces. And sometimes you come up with something also from your soul and it, it is more for uh, a brand like like Moy in this uh, in this case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and that brings us then to to the new light, right? You're sitting you're sitting underneath. Um, yeah, the this picture, is it. right? The tinkering. <laughs> the, yeah, the so tinkering. Yeah. <laughs> let's dive Here a little is. bit deeper into into the tinkering, and and yeah. so we're introducing the light um, actually with the, with the great tagline, I think. Take time for tinkering. Can yeah. you explain a little bit like why and how? And So I, I was grown up with tinkering. I think, you know, this word is often used just, in, you know, in, in primary schools and, and it's, uh, it, it's not uh, a word you often use if you create something very special. But I think tinkering is very 
uh, important to do if you just want to create and you just want to experiment uh, by hands. So at one one time, I, for for me, the workshop is really important. And I thought, you know, just these pieces of metal. Why why not construct something nice from it and create like little structures like this? And then you know what what can you do with it? So I took it a little step further, and then I made a sort of little lamp. <laughs> yeah sort of lamps just like this it's funny funny little structures and it acts a little bit more like just a candlestick because this light you know it doesn't give enough light to illuminate your whole living room but um, it was a nice little sort of sculpture and uh, after doing that it became more and more uh, refined and i made some little molds to do it very uh, precise and uh, then i said to kiki like we still need like a big lamp over our dining table at our house. Uh, it's a dining table of about three meters long. So I said, I'm gonna try to make something out of this, uh, this method. So I just started to create and to sort of, you know, as a sort of composer, compose this, this, uh, this lamp with all these lamps. So I thought, okay, I need one there, one there. And I, I made a sort of layout and just started to connect all these little pieces <clears throat> really by hand and just uh, in, 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 yeah, just a bit with a, with a bit of, uh, help with some aid of, to keep everything straight, but it, it just sort of arised. And then I thought it was a really nice lamp. So I showed it during the Dutch design week, uh, just before we, uh, we hang it in our house. And then I called, uh, Marcel and I said, uh, I think you have to take a look at this lamp if, because I think it might be something for, uh, for Moy. And, uh, so two weeks later, we, uh, we had a discussion already about it. Wow, knowing of course, like you have of course, they had the they had the light behind us, like the construction yeah. lamp has been in the collection also, which is also like all these metal parts being put together, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. In this case, like with with uh, like a screw system kind of uh, thing, but um, to me, like what you were showing, it's like it's almost like a Russian constructivist kind of feel to it, right? It's like. And I remember yeah. that from last year in Milan also that that was like one of the things that you were working with in these like these paintings that has like a very Russian constructivist kind of feel yeah, kind of for yeah, me. So. Yeah, that, uh, that's of course an inspiration. Uh, uh, the Dutch artist Constant who also made models a little bit in this kind of uh, way. But yeah, I think the, the general thing is with those, with those artists, they, uh, artists, they, they also a tinker they make and they create and uh, that's the most important thing in the, in, in, in the works uh, also uh, alexander calder for example who also do you know is in the workshop and makes these these things um yeah i think that that often leads yeah. to the yeah le leads to very interesting uh, forms of creativity yeah and and then like so you already described so marcel like you, you showed it that the dutch design week yeah, which is i think yeah. an important moment every year in 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 eindhoven right like the design world yeah. comes and uh had like to eindhoven from like everywhere in the world basically um uh, to see new things and to see like uh, students uh work as well and it's not just one fair but it's like spread out all over the city right yeah yeah um, and it's you you open your studio yeah, yeah, we, every year, we, uh, yeah, uh, coming year for uh, the 19th time that we show <laughs> during the Dutch Design wow. Week. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> ready for a long time. So, we were one of the first also to join the, the, the design exhibition of the Design Academy, which is always a big exhibition. But we thought the year after we exhibited there that, that we could do our own show. And so, since then, we did every year a show, either in our workshop or uh, a rented location. Uh, for the for the last about ten years, we always did it in our own studio, and it's a bit more experimental. It's not so much brand based, but it's more uh, based on uh, uh, graduates, uh, more experimental. Um, yeah, different teams, but it's it's a good good design uh, show. Yeah. And and you mentioned so Marcel saw you called Marcel basically. So obviously yeah, you well, were a designer that got called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It had, like you, you, you're on such terms that he actually had like actually it comes to you like he, he sees what he and he likes it. And but then can you yeah. describe what happens after that? So like hey, there is and yeah. we always like, <laughs> to, like to say that with more we, we try to realize uh, designers' dreams basically. But like what happens after a moment like that when there is this interest and. Yeah, that happened the same what happened, for example, with the construction lamp, because also that lamp 
uh, was made in her own studio initially with a very low tech technique, just, you know, cut pieces of metal and screws. And when we um, were developing that lamp, we could make uh, casted elements of steel that made it much more refined and much more elegant and much more detailed. And also with this lamp, uh, we were looking to ways to incorporate the electricity in a nice way. Um, so in, in these lamps I made, it's, it's just the electricity ran through these little tubes, which I think is maybe not even possible for a real product. Um, uh, so the, the, the best solution for this lamp is, was using the uh, electro sandwich technique that allowed us to just make a structure, not caring about where the electricity came from or uh, where it had to go. It's just there in, in the structure, which is, I think, a fantastic technique for designers because it gives you so much freedom in, in, in the things you create in, the, in everything. So, and then I wanted to take it a step further because normally with the electro sandwich technique, you also have electricity wire from the lamp to the ceiling. And I wanted to get rid of that. So there was a little bit of a technical solution uh, needed. So here mm -hmm. you see- Can you show, just, yeah. Yeah, so you see the two wires going to the ceiling mm -hmm. and those are actually the plus and the minus for the electricity. Hey. So, oh, <laughs> it's almost up. Um, so there's nothing else uh, needed in there. And that I think is so super elegant. And those are the things that really make uh, products very special. And uh, uh, those are the typical things you can do with a brand like Moyes to develop it in a, in a further way. For example, these, these caps, they made of, of solid brass and then uh, coated. And it has these very nice diffusers that give mm -hmm. a very warm glow to the light. And those are the, the things that really make it into a very nice and usable product. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and like, so yeah, indeed, if you look at like uh, the first light we developed with the uh, electro sandwich technique, where indeed like the current runs through, through the frame is our Heraclean fixture. Um, mm -hmm. and um, then recently we introduced the Hubble bubble and now the tinkering is kind of like the third light in this uh, this family um, and the tinkering also like all our new products now comes with uh, with the button as well as, as you know so like the button is a way for us to um, have technology basically uh, to protect authentic design um, and also extend warranties basically it's a way to connect uh, the client the user with uh, with our brand basically um, and also to help uh, protect the investment for like uh, uh, that people make into uh, into a light or to a lighting fixture or more products. Um, do you have any thoughts on like the button also? Like, because I, I I remember I hearing about like with the construction lamp copy the copy issue. Yeah, there was a very terrible copy from uh, from China, of course. Um, uh, well, that, that leaves also a little bit of a fun note to it. I mean, as a designer, you always say there's one thing worse than being copied, and that's not being copied, because in some kind of way, it's an honor. But on the other hand, of course, it's very important to, to, uh, for our authenticity and our copyrights that, you know, everyone is, is taking it seriously. It took a very long time to develop, and uh, it's very nice that Moy takes care of the designers and, and uh, of this issue, because I think it's a very important issue, especially nowadays, where everything is supposed to be by some younger people, open source and uh, copyable. Um, so I think it's important that uh, MOI stands for authenticity and uh, uh, copyrights. Great, great. Let me see, there is, I think there is a question um, from the audience also. Um, the, if the light, have, does the light give enough light for above a dining table. Well, I mean, you have it Definitely. in your yeah. own dining, over your own dining table, yeah. so. So this, so this lamp, it's a 140 in um, the length of 140 centimeter. Uh, it has 12 uh, LED uh, components with together, it gives a 21 watts output. I don't exactly know how many lumen that is, but it's definitely enough for a very nice warm light over a I dining table. I think it's around like like some between 750 and 800 lumens, I think, for the larger version, yeah. because it also comes in two different sizes, right? It comes in the yeah, size yeah. that you have there. Yeah, and there's a smaller version of 95, which has seven uh, LED uh, elements. Okay, okay. 
Um, and um, there is another question. Um, is it a modular system, the, the one that you have here, or? No, it's, it's all fixed. It's welded together. Uh, but um, if, if you see the sort of outline or the, the graphic image of this lamp, it would be very nice to have a, a couple of lamps next to each other or to combine them in a sort of line. And that, that's very well possible because it, it almost looks if there's no beginning and no end. So it's mm -hmm. very good possible to combine those, uh, those two. And also to, to change directions so you can, you know, up and down for, for like a bigger space. You can use multiple ones uh, and next to each other and over each other to create a very nice effect. Okay, which is something we always love, of course, indeed. Like I cut like that, but yeah. the, the more lights together, cluster our lights together. We have that with like uh, other lights, of course, with uh, with our well-known random light, Raymond light with Heraclium, and like yeah. with the, the, the Heraclium Endless, of course. Um, so it's great to see that that's also uh, um, a possibility of uh, uh, for the tinkering, of course. Yeah. Um, I said I saw another question coming by. It's like, can you could you hang it like uh, instead of horizontal, vertically? That's an interesting um, question, right? I don't think we've had that before. Question. Um, it, I think it's possible. Structurally, it's possible, but you just need to drill some holes in the wall, and then I think it's very well possible. Yeah, why not? Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing to tinker, think a little bit further on the, <laughs> on the lamp. Yeah, okay. So that would be an interesting installation uh, to, to, uh, to see that. Definitely. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. would be willing to help uh, with, with solutions to do so. so. Okay, that, that's, all, that's always uh, good to hear. In, in thinking about your collaborations with Moy, like what, 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 uh, how do you feel? Like what, uh, what's special about it or what do you... Uh, well, I think what what Moy makes very special is that they they always take these 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 special objects, which uh, which are uh, definitely not a safe choice. Uh, but the way they uh, present it, the way they present the whole brand, uh, together with the the other objects in the brand, and of course the detailing and the attention they have for the craftsmanship and for 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 the design makes it really special. I think there, there are very few brands that have uh, such a broad and uh, uh, collection with such a variety, also variety in designers, and uh, that makes it really special. And I'm, I'm happy to be a uh, part of the family, so to speak. Yeah. Well, it definitely feels like, uh, Joost, that you're, you're part of the family. Um, so in our brand store here in New York, uh, we are still waiting for the tinkering. So it's not here yet, uh, but ours, it's coming. Yeah. The good thing is for, for the market also here in the U.S. Uh, is that um, the light is UL listed, which is very important uh, here. I have the local certification. So um, have we the, both versions are UL listed. Um, it will be available from stock. People can order it. Um, have from this moment on and uh, also a lot of our dealers um, spread out over the US will have the light uh, in the showroom in the very near uh, future. Um, yeah. Are there because any more a, questions? Uh, yeah, Joost, you have the... No, because uh, because I, I think the, the, the fact to have it in the showroom and to, to see it in real is quite important because um, uh, you see sometimes this image I see now up there uh, of a little detail of the lamp. It's it's very good photo photography with a detail, but the full lamp is quite hard to capture the whole feeling of it. So if you see it in real, it's it's better than the pictures. Right? Yeah, the, the, that's 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 good to hear. It's like um, on the website also, you can find of course all uh, all the information as well. And and what uh, what I really like is that we actually use the, the image of like the light installed above your dining table. That's actually your yeah, dining yeah, yeah. table it's, it's, that we yeah, have on the, on the website. We, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so so uh, the, the, one of the questions that actually came in is like, what's your favorite food to eat under <laughs> your tinkering light? <laughs> on the table. Oh, and I your have, uh, dining table. Uh, I know you have, a, you, have a, you have a pizza oven, right? Like you built Yeah, yeah, we made oven. a whole... Uh, we made a whole outdoor uh, kitchen and I have one, yeah, so, so it could be pizza, but then it should be my, my signature pizza, which is a pizza with uh, baba ganoush uh, and then we bake it, then we put on um, uh, uh, rocket, uh, rocket salad. Uh, Arugula, yeah, 
yeah, yeah. Okay. And, wow. and, then, and, then, and then homemade truffle mayonnaise on top. And that's uh, the senior to pizza from the garden. That's a perfect one to eat that one. <laughs> I would love to try that pizza at some point. Wow. Um, Next time you're in Amman. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll come especially to Eindhoven for that. Um, and then I have another question that came that just came in also. How about installing one or several on runners to, so they can be repositioned in the space when needed? Does that work with electrical components? Um, uh, that's some I, technical things I don't Very know. technical question. I think what you would need is you would probably need to have like these special attachments with which you would hang them on a rail. Um, yeah. And that might because require, it, because of course you need plus and minus. So that's not something that will be easily done. It, it comes with this black box you see up there. Uh, at, um, I don't, I can don't you show know it again? I didn't see the, can you show it again? Because I didn't really it's, it's, uh, see the canopy. Yeah, okay, the rectangular. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, rectangular one. It's about 40 centimeters wide. Um, so it comes with that. So, so how that technically works, I, I mean, I, I cannot tell you. I'm sorry. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, Joost, thank you uh, for, your, for your time. It was a pleasure uh, seeing you here and talking to you. Um, yeah. I don't know if there was any more questions or uh, did you have anything to add also? Uh, you come, you come to go visit us yeah. in New York soon, if, right? If, 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 you, if you look very well, uh, all the possible questions I already asked, answered on the wall behind me. So you could have zoomed in and then, you know. Okay, we have all the answers, it was, yeah. It was all oh. there, yeah. Of course, if there is more questions, you can always uh, reach out to us uh, through uh, course, the yeah. Moy website. Um, we are here in New York also, we're open, uh, the, the brand store is open on appointments. So uh, if people want to come by and we can definitely let you know once it's here also, of course. So Joost again, uh, thank you very much for, uh, well, for your thank time. Thank you. Like saying, for, say hi, to, say hi to, uh, to Kiki and the, and the family I also. Will. <laughs> All good. right, good, thank good. you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Bye.